Hi, welcome to Cut and Uncut with Daphne and Bonnie Violet. My name is Daphne and I'm Cut. And I'm Bonnie Violet and I'm Uncut. Here we talk about all things trans. And then some. In this episode, we'll be reacting to Ren Million subscribers and Diazepan, as well as Chinchilla Fingers Live. Ooh. I forgot my button. There you go. We also want to give a big shout out and a thank you to our Patreon members, Skylar Bean, Jacob Blankenship, Elizabeth, Danielle Loyal, and Bertha D. Hugs and kisses. And be sure to subscribe and watch us on YouTube or listen to us on Spotify. Join us on Patreon. Follow us on the TikTok. Be sure to get that merch. <laughs> All right. Sunday, 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 huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I should be sending out an apology today, don't shouldn't I, Bonnie? I sent one out on your behalf. Oh, you're so kind. So mm -hmm. um my mom isn't doing too well, so it has challenged my um schedule but um it's a little stressful for me but i am working through it so you know with challenges comes changes so please be patient with us and me and it's greatly appreciated awesome no, all right no worries all right bonnie so what's on the show tonight all right yeah. well we're gonna finally do million subscribers which we keep getting that over and over and over yeah, um, <laughs> folks seem to think that it'll just help us have more context uh, to Ren and his work. So us or me? You? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe so you. I, I want to give a contact or a shout out to all of our um, subscribers and people that have been leaving comments about poor Daphne. You know, she's wayward and you know thank you for being patient with me i am definitely trying my best to understand and put myself in other people's shoes when it comes to how we deal with pain um so i just want you to know he has my undying love and support <laughs> and like anyone else if you want to know something you have to ask questions you have to work through it and you have to be committed to understanding and be willing to change and like i said i'm a disco queen and I can be a little biased, but um, I have love for everybody. So I'm willing to work through that. Awesome. All right. Well, here we go. Keep this short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um, first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is a flipping huge milestone. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or have been here for a while. I wanted to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this, this, this passage that I wrote about success. It's too much for me to remember right now, so bear with me, but yeah. Success to me means that I have a responsibility that transcends me. If I have a platform where people are paying attention, then I feel like it's my duty to make that count. It's far more important than my aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me. And that makes me feel very rich. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. The thing that has by far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations, which brought me the most joy. Creating art, which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark, justifies my own pain. And I desperately needed that to be justified. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems, I was severely underweight. All my meals had to be restricted and blended. And I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't socialize. I couldn't watch films. I couldn't read. My bones constantly hurt. Even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. And this went on for years with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good because it felt insidious. 
Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. But I'm here to tell you that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe, is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are, you won't hurt forever. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You can be ferocious and you could be magnificent. For the medical industry, who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. For the people living in the light, who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority. Priority number one. If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it. Feel it. Understand it, express it, and then let it go. You're hurting. Give yourself love, forgive yourself, and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass. We have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell, towards Jannah or Jahannam, utopia or dystopia, and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell. So tread carefully, but treat those differences with respect. Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety and the sum of their parts. <laughs> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I love you. like that i blame you bonnie for what because if you'd have led with this video um before we went down this renegade i would have been in love much sooner i've never seen the video until now <laughs> what that was a very powerful message i completely resonate with everything that he said from my transition to becoming a woman, to transgender woman, I should, I wanna clarify that, um, to any pain dealing with society and how I choose to move through the, the matrix, um, remembering, feeling, experiencing everything, not letting it um, define me and using that pain to bring light and awareness is everything that I have truly designed myself to be a part of. And had I have known that I was in this amazing tapestry along with him, I would have understood a lot of what he was going through. Everybody deals with pain totally different. And that was being said through our comments. Um, that is why you love Ren. Yes, I can understand. And now, um, I'm extremely proud to know that I'm not alone and that he is not alone and that we all have the same um, mission in life. And I think that joining this renegade can really help start the healing process and understanding of people. 
um, it is an art form of what he is doing, just like myself is an art form and how I am. And everyone in yours is an art form of how you choose to move through the matrix as well. You're a beautiful woman and you have an extremely gift of drag and you're very proud of that. And un unfortunately, the world around us does not move with us the same way. Mm -hmm. And he understood, you know, everybody has, a, oh, I got to put my charger on, bear me with me <laughs> before this dies, because it'll be a short-lived li life, people. Yeah, we don't want that happening. But and yeah, like... Happens. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, so... <laughs> if it does go off, people, I apologize, but... um Okay, Bonnie, that's what I had to say yeah. about that. So what yeah, did well, you... And I think I think he spoke a lot to what, like, I know last week we watched uh, Sick Boy and um, Seven Sins, and I know it was, like, really intense, but I think that's what he was talking about when he's, like, if you're angry, if you're mad, like, to just, like, take it on, you know, like, mm -hmm. deal with it, feel it, express it in whatever way you need to do. And I felt like that's what those songs did was it really allowed you to confront and accept what was happening, express it so that you can move on, because otherwise it just... It just builds up and builds up and builds up. Um, and I think the thing too, when he was talking about like his like his worst part in life is now bringing him joy and bringing other people joy. And you know that's something we learn a lot in recovery. You know that we find ways to turn in our to turn our deficits into assets. We 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 come to understand that our ability to get like off of drugs and alcohol and to live the lives that we live is is remarkable. And it's something that other people can get hope from as well. And so um, I think that's a lot of why I connect with Ren as well too, is that he's able to talk about his experience and the hard times and the difficult times, but there's still hope in that. And it's like, so if, if he can do it, then I can do it. You know what I mean? And so I know that's what it was for me when I came across him was, I was just feeling so alone with my feelings and my emotions and my battle, if you will, in my head. And I was just feeling like I was like unable to handle it on my own. And I was having some sort of problem that I shouldn't be having because of my age or because I'm, I'm like, well, or, you know, all these sorts of things. And so it was really helpful just to watch high Ren, And it just like, I pulled everything out that, that I was going through and just was like, boom, here you go. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm not that unique, which we know as well, right? Um, yeah, we that all... was ultimately depressing for me to find out that I'm not unique. <laughs> well, we are unique. We are unique. We just can't allow our uniqueness to, to become terminal for us because I know I can feel so unique that that keeps me from connecting to you or anyone, which ultimately makes me feel not good about being in the world. And so I can't let my uniqueness, you know, kill me, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think Ren has a way of um, helping us see where we connect and see where our sameness is, even when it's not obvious, um, you know, how we are connected or how we, re how we can relate to one another, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, I also wanted to um, go back. He just spoke such inspiration. Like he just, I felt him breathing new new life and new understanding with also compassion and empathy mm -hmm. um and i think a lot more people in the world well first of all congratulations on his um accomplishment and his success mm -hmm. and what that means to him it's not the richness of monetary it's the richness of being able to connect to people being able to have people like you and mm -hmm. other renegators to pass his message along and be inspired and to keep the the message alive that's that's yeah. very powerful you know and mm -hmm. a lot of people have these platforms and they don't do that and yeah. i think that's very important like you said to use your platforms to you know do good in the world yeah and i think that's very powerful so cool and I, you, Ren. I think he really spoke well too and he like showed what it meant what humility looks like and it wasn't about like, like one of the things that he was talking about was actually like claiming, claiming your bigness, claiming your greatness. Cause I think in my experience, I always thought humility was about like becoming smaller or becoming uh, like becoming right-sized is really what humility is. Like 
but like for me i think for a long time it just meant that i needed to be less in order to be more right sized and mm -hmm. the last few years i've noticed and it's become harder to actually step into more of the person um you know so that i can be right sized in in the bigness of me as well too in a way that's not um pompous or arrogant or full of self but just in a sense of like knowing my purpose and my worth and my value and what i have to bring to the world or bring to this job or bring to a friendship or my family or you know those sorts of things and really being able to own that um, is not arrogance it's just knowing oneself i was gonna say and that's in the bible know thyself you know that's mm -hmm. very hard to do you know because people don't want you to know yourself they want to mm -hmm. tell you how to be you this is how you should be and and like he said, he the doctors do a huge disservice by just, mm. you know, that was that was huge by, you know, saying that the medical industry needs to step up. Yeah. And I think that that's important, you know, um, if they have a gift of using that talent, it should be mm -hmm. done, you know, for righteous things. Right. And well, like, um, so like, and kind of what I think he was talking about too, is like, yeah, the medical community can be better but one of the things that I, I, I am a, Tuesday is actually my birthday uh, for starting my transition. You're going to be 50? I'm going to be three <laughs> in, in my transition. And I'm Happy actually birthday. going, and I'm actually going with a mutual friend who is starting hormones tomorrow. And so I'm going with them to their first appointment. And one of the things that, that I talked with them about was that like, you know, because we, we, a year ago, we went to go do this together and there was a bad experience with the provider. And so they just didn't do it. And so then a year later, they were really wanting to do it. And I was like, don't let this doctor, don't let this provider say something or their ignorance or whatever, keep you from getting what you want. You know what I mean? And so, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that can be hard um, yeah. to advocate for ourselves when we're in those really vulnerable moments. And thank God for having someone with support. That is very mm -hmm. important to have support in any situation, someone to talk to. And we, we shared a little bit about that, about um, going through your past and dredging up that stuff so you can have someone that you're comfortable and that you yeah. trust to um, share your vulnerability with, you know? Right. And thank God Ren has these amazing followers to share that pain with. So he doesn't mm -hmm. have to go through this alone. And now he now has me and you to share that with. And I understand, I'm very understanding now of what it, what he was, what he went through, mm -hmm. how he overcame it, and now how he wields his strength. And that's, that's extremely powerful. You know, my favorite person is Wonder Woman, you know. <laughs> yes. Um, she has this great responsibility, you know, this, this woman, and she's got, she uses it for good. Everybody has a superpower. Right. And it's how you tend to use your superpower is what's important, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you know, his, his willingness to share his pain is helping others, but ultimately it's also helping him because yes. it makes you feel like it was worthwhile. Yes. Um, you know? Yeah. So, so thank you for commenting and for sharing that with us. I yeah. Really people kept, people kept saying it and kept saying it and it just, I just didn't come up. So um, I always just, we get a lot of suggestions all the time. And so okay. it's sometimes hard to like, and I haven't felt like just putting them in order and going down. And so yeah. I just kind of- what was the name of this one? Trust my gut. This one's called Million Subscribers. So this was when he got a million subscribers. He now has like 1.35 million uh, okay. subscribers on, on YouTube. But um, the next one that we have is called Diazepam. And uh, yeah, but diazepam is a medication. Um, it's like a mental health medication. Are you familiar with it? Mm -hmm. When I was in recovery, I was a house manager. I had to go through all the medications with some of the women. So I got familiar with a lot of the, the medication that the women brought into the house. So I had to really understand what it was for and um, how to provide the dosages and make sure that it wasn't being abused or whatever medication mm -hmm. that it was. So I know a yeah. little bit about it. All right. Well, and this song will definitely give you a sense of like what the pill is and 
maybe why you were monitoring yep. it as well. <laughs> but here we go. I think this is the right one. You make me feel like everything's not dissolving Spinning doors are revolving Swallow a tablet, I'm overindulging One of the things that I was really um, There's almost kind of this romanticism Or this like love for the drug Which I've never taken diazepam But um, I really believe a lot of my initial drug, drug use and substance use I first started using drugs, it was ecstasy and I really felt like I was, I was in need of a medicine. I was in need of something to soften the blow of life because, you know, I just got my HIV diagnosis and I was, you know, a teen when that happened. And like, it just was like, life just became really, really hard and I needed something to like help. And so I, I think I definitely had that sort of romance, romance, if you will, with like ecstasy um, in the beginning because it did kind of like, take me it took all that stuff away it softened it softened things yeah do you want to say anything or should we move on um we can move on okay spinning doors are evolving swallow a tablet i'm over indulging I've tried, tried, I had to plan to Be the optimist and resist cards folding You're the crutch that I'm holding Don't want tomorrow cause right now I'm golden Don't lie, lie, diazepam me. Promise me the world, but now I'm rotting and molding. And my face, it feels swollen. Anesthetic, I block that emotion. One of the things that was coming up for me, hi, Carrie, glad you found, you, you found us. Um, but uh, the Very thing that I was that I found interesting as well too, is like, he was talking about, you know, the medication kind of like helped get away the demons. And I think oftentimes there's this like, you know, there is a difference between mental health and spiritual health, I believe. But I think oftentimes it's hard to know the difference or sometimes you can read them as the same, you know what I mean? And so, and, and, you know, there's some people who don't, you know, who maybe don't believe in spirituality or, you know, having that part of yourself. And so I think mental health in a lot of ways, sometimes I perceive it as how I've come to understand my spirituality. Like I think in the past I would have labeled uh, more of my spiritual health concerns as mental things when it wasn't mental, it was spiritual. And so I think, but I think they're so closely tied that sometimes it's hard to tell you know, or maybe they're both happening at the same time. I don't know, but I thought it was interesting. There was that spiritual and mental health kind of way of trying to um, help one and help help you. But I think, you know, in a lot of ways with any sort of like getting better, if you fix one thing, if you can address one thing, like maybe it's just your body and you're working on getting it better, that's gonna impact your mental health and your spiritual health. And, Vice versa, if you do prayer and meditation, that'll ultimately help you with your mental health. And 
you know, eventually probably your mental health will want will cause you to want to work out or, you know, all these sorts of things, you know, because it can feel overwhelming to try to address it all at once. And sometimes you just got to pick one thing and just really focus on that and, and trust that the others will, you know, come into play. Yeah, the only medication that I've truly had to use or truly have used besides drugs was the um, the hormones, mm -hmm. Premarin, you know, that we used to joke and call it Beetlejuice, 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 you know, because <laughs> it was kind of like transforming us and it gave us a high mm. um, of being feminine and glowing and, you know. Um, but it wasn't a physical high, it was like an emotional, it was a spiritual. High because it, it helped me know mm -hmm. that this this medication is going to help me be a better become more comfortable mm -hmm. being a woman and watching my body change and so mentally it was a great um escape too for me you know diazepam mm -hmm. from what he's saying is that it if i'm saying this right it took away from him the pain and he he um it gave him this illusion of being better mm -hmm. and the video is beautiful i love the artwork on it um really cute um and like carrie stated he says he's golden you know i think mm -hmm. that's what i'm understanding is that he's saying is that you know this pill was amazing but yet it's it takes away from him wanting to feel the pain is that mm -hmm. correct yeah. to say? Yeah, I mean, that's the hard, that's the challenge with um, sub substances, whether you go to a doctor and get them or you, you try to, you know, come up with a cocktail on your own is that sometimes, you, again, you can be trying to address one thing and in order to knock one part out that is your problem, it sometimes impacts the rest, you know, and oftentimes with substance use, it's like emotional and mental health stuff, you know, like when we got sober, you know, a lot of times they say that your brain is like the age of when you started drinking and using. And so a lot of us have these kind of immature brains and immature, I think, emotional um, literacy, like really understanding. Cause like before it was like either, either I'm, I'm mad or I'm, or I'm happy or elated, you know, or like there's very few emotions that you would label things like I'm, I'm afraid or like whatever. Whereas now you can start to see that there's a lot of different, um, different emotions. And I know like sometimes for me, I used to get really anxious. And when I get that anxious feeling thinking like, oh no, it's anxiety, it's stress. And sometimes it's actually excitement. And so sometimes I just have to check myself because an excitement yeah. is much more enjoyable, if you will, <laughs> experience than, you know, than not. I would have to say if I had a diazepam, it would have been malt liquor. Mm. Um, because that for me gave me the same effects that he's talking about with diazepam. Mm -hmm. It helped me be comfortable in my own skin. It quieted the voices in my head mm -hmm. about being, people can tell you're a, a dude, people don't really like you because you're trans. You know what I mean? It quieted all of that mm -hmm. for me. And now that I don't have that, I'm forced to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I have to deal with it every day. And some days are, are harder than other days. Do I want to get out of bed? Did I didn't get this job because I'm trans? Or is it because of my um, mm. skills? I don't know. But those are where my mind goes. And I would drink to wash all of those thoughts away. But now right. I have to accept them for, for just normal thoughts. But now we get to at least like deal with them. And, and we, they start to not because, you know, I know for me, I used to think that I just got over shit or I wasn't impacted by things, but you know, those things stick with you. And um, until you really get honest with yourself, which is I think what a lot of the million subscribers was saying is like, sometimes you have to wrestle with your shadows. You got to wrestle with the darkness. You got to wrestle with your anger. You got to wrestle with that hate so that you can actually really move past it rather than just it's sticking onto you, you know, because it does yeah. it does have a way of sticking to you, um, and it builds up. Do you remember who who um, sus told us to watch this video? Which um, subscriber was? Who didn't? Like I'm <laughs> telling you, there were there were a number of people who suggested it. Carrie says this is what happens when the drugs no longer work. Yep. Yeah, you grow mm -hmm. up. 
Well, <laughs> and you have adult problems. <laughs> well, everything catches up to you. It doesn't matter that you like it stops. It stops working. It stops being the solution because you yeah. can't drink enough or use enough or escape enough and then uh, to mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, should we get this going? Yeah, let's keep going. We, we fall down the rabbit hole. Carried away, anesthetic bleeding, a place for the pain. Self-destructive healing is one and the same. Oh, die, die, die as a bomb. Synesthetic dreaming, I'm carried away. Anesthetic bleeding, a place for the pain. Self-destructive healing is one and the same. Don't lie, lie, die as a pound. They should just use this in place of those warming, those warnings on the pharmaceutical meds. Cause I feel like this has a way of like expressing like the good things, but also like possible side effects, right? Yeah. But I think it makes it a little bit more like um, understanding. This was also making me remember, do you know Star Amarasu? She's a trans girl who um, sings and stuff. And she has a song called Kalanapin. Um, and so she talks about her kind of like her relationship with Klonopin. She also has a song called Meg Ryan, but I think it would, I think, I don't know, maybe we should listen to her sometimes. I I love her, Um, but sorry about that tangent. (laughs) Ready? Okay. Oops, there we go. Synesthetic dreaming, I'm carried away Anesthetic bleeding, a place for the pain Self-destructive healing is one and the same What does it mean, don't lie, diazepam? Is that that what it, is that what he said, don't lie, diazepam? I wonder what that is an assimilation for. I mean, maybe lie to me about like what you can do for me. You know what I mean? Because I think there's that element of like, you know, it's making me feel better in some ways. But then he talked about the stuff that he lost in being on it, so to speak. So I think that's the idea that the diazepam lied to me. It's saying that it's helping me, but really, is it? Right. It also gives me this whole, um, the video gives me this trippy LSD kind of uh, mm-hmm. of um assimilation now you know tina turner did a song back in the day um regarding acid a video that was like super trippy and you're supposed to and i'm not going to encourage this i'm not encouraging this but you would watch this video while tripping on acid back in the day and Mm. it was just a a crazy video so that kind of brought me to that it's a lie and die, die as a pimp. Thank you, Gary. You must know this song, Gary. You have to <laughs> your playlist. <laughs> I love the sound of it too. I remember hearing it, like somebody mentioned it in the message today. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, that's one I wanted to do. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that one today. Okay. Because I was also trying to find out how we could get like, cause I know last time was so intense. I was trying to yeah. like, counteract that a little bit. And I mm-hmm. thought at least with this diazepam song for me, I felt really related to my substance use, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think one of the things that's important, you know, I'm grateful for the time that I did have with my medicine, with the drugs, I guess, because I think it's what I needed and it afforded me life when I was struggling to have it at the time, you know, and, and so what I know today what I know today is that it's not going to give me life. It's going to take away from life. And that doesn't make it bad. It doesn't make what it was the for experience. me before. Exactly. It doesn't invalidate what it was for me before. But I can know today that 
I don't need it. And it's not going to help me in the ways that it once did. I'm not in need of that same sort of um, fix, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say that so far, I think a million subscribers is now my favorite out of all. I keep changing at them. So I know. I think that one is my new favorite because that was like so super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so you owe me a steak dinner for not putting this one out earlier. Wait, I'll put it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the mail for you. Carrie says, yes, sometimes the only thing keeping you waking up sometimes. What is that? Yes, yes sometimes. sometimes it's the only thing keep waking you up sometimes. Keep you is that, would that be your thoughts? Because for me, that's what keeps me awake at night is this I constant think, thought process, you know? Well, I think she was meaning like the fact that I can actually still get up every morning. Like I didn't, my life didn't end. I didn't take my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I get to wake up every day because of, you know, the medicine or whatever. I probably didn't say that in the way, but that's what I heard it, heard it as. Yeah. The drugs, she said. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next one is not a Ren, but um, it's Chinchilla. Because last week you heard, you got introduced yes, to Chinchilla and Wings nice. with mm -hmm. Chalked Outlines. So if folks haven't watched that. Check it out. We actually, I actually just posted it today. Um, so wow. check it out. And then um, this one is Chinchilla. And let's see, this person says, Jeff says you should do some of the long form interviews. Maybe the Zach Sang interview. Yeah. Write that down, Bonnie. Yeah, I've, that would be interesting. It's, it's um, you know, because like initially it was all like just the music videos, but there is like a lot of... Um, him talking, you know what I mean? Because there was somebody else who suggested a number of other, um, when I made the comment about posting a day early, yeah. she con and I said, any suggestions to do with Million? And there was someone who um, recommended a couple other that were more of like behind the scenes of High Ren. And there was actually oh, like I a clip. Those. And there's like a clip from him when he was sick, talking about being sick. So there's a, a lot of stuff out there. William Keith, who's a regular Hi, commenter, William. says, being unique makes us who we are. What others think of me is not my concern. It's what I think of me that matters. True oh, story, like, William. True amen. story. Amen. I don't say amen, but amen. <laughs> <laughs> True story, brother. <laughs> Jeff says, I wish more reactors would watch the interviews. We've all watched them too many times ourselves. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, we're I mean. Gonna do it. We're going to do it, Jeff. We're going we're gonna to watch the interviews because... For me, I like to hear that voice. I think it's mm -hmm. this whole accent that kind of gets me trippy. Like, okay, what you said? Okay. <laughs> I saw, you know, I'm down for the interviews, Bonnie. So line them up, sweetie. And we can do, we can probably do great discussions like we did because for all I, we could have kept going about that. that um, yeah, well, maybe we can use- Subscriber video. Maybe like we did tonight, like we can do the interview as kind of the, um, the foreplay, if you will. And then we'll go into like, like listening to the it. songs and whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, Jeff says yay. Jeff's, Jeff's happy about that. Yeah, right. so put also some comments in there. What else do you think we would um, love to enjoy as well, everyone? Yes, and, uh, and Daphne will write that down, right? <laughs> no, you're going to write it down. I'm going to tell you to write it down. Exactly. So... You had, you had asked for more chinchilla last week. Yes, and, I did. Um, there were a couple that were brought up, but today this one kept coming up a couple of times. And so, and William might have been one of the people who suggested it. William, but, did you, did you um, tell us to watch that? But this, one is, this one's called Fingers Live. And so it's a live performance of chinchilla. All right. Roll ready? that tape, Bonnie.
scars will never fade so me i'm like what is she wearing i was gonna say can you stop this so i can eye candy this fashion and these nails and that hat because this is giving me everything like diva all the way down from the puff jacket to the hat i mean i am here for it come on but, lady fingers right that silhouette is interesting and she's like she has kind of these high femme elements but she's also very like more masculine. I hate using femme and mask, but I think that she has a lot of that juxtaposition. Like a top hat is typically something that's more a man would wear or whatever, you know? And so I think she has a way of kind of, um, I don't know, mashing the two in a way that I, you I know, don't Grace think Jones used to do. do that as well. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, no, no. I mean, there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, David Bowie very much. I think that kind of vibe as well. Elton yeah. John. Yes. Um, Definitely. You know, me loving fashion. I am all over this. I know. Woo! I thought you were. Yes, William. <laughs> all right. So let's. Yes. Here we go. But skulls will never fade. So me and me to a clock the same as always. Favorite spot. And one by one I'll cut. Fingers clean off So you can never pull me down One by one I'll box them up Scream murder No, you can never hurt no one So tell me where you're gone, gone And tell me is the fun gone away Maybe I should shed a tear Cause this was me last year So mean me Late at night Where no one hears us I won't bite And one by one Were you wanting to say something? Yes! Can somebody stop me from falling off this chair? <laughs> I love, love, love this, Carrie. William says she makes her own fashion. Mm -hmm. Well, who the hell else can create that? That's giving me Humpty Dumpty, Prince, a voice like Tina Marie, mm -hmm. fashion. I mean, totally, I'm all for everything. She's a total 100 percenter for me. Right. She's got it all. She, she can sing well. She's and beautiful. Looks. And she can perform mm -hmm. in a way that's awesome, too. Um. Jeff says, haha, you guys need to do an all chinchilla day. Elements, little girl gone, MF diamond, you'll fall madly in love. Write that down, Bonnie. You heard it. And Jeff said, you better put a seat. <laughs> I know, right? He just, when she hit that one note, oh, I was like, oh my God, take me now. What was this? There that is was so much. Amazing. Lord, that was amazing. Mm. Lord, that was just one note. Imagine if she bellow out. I don't think I can contain myself. I think just right. I think I do need a seatbelt for Miss Thing. Right. Well, you know, I, I'm getting caught up in the eye candy and struggling to get it, the ear candy as well. You know what I mean? Like, I look forward to listening to it again. Okay. Sure. Here we go. I won't bite and one. Did you just orgasm? <laughs> I did a whole bunch of stuff. I had to pay homage. I had to bow down to the queen. I had to be like, okay, Chinchilla Mama, you got it right now. Mm -hmm. I love, I am in love with the other woman. Baby, yeah. she knows she can blow. That was a mouth orgasm for sure. Yes. I hope there's more. <laughs> Give right. me more. I'm going to go back and we'll do it again. 
Sinead O'Connor voice like come on now when I heard it I was like yep that's who I'm getting and I love me some Sinead baby mm. I accidentally pushed the video back and at the beginning that's why you're gonna go to hell Bonnie <laughs> <laughs> let's do here I guess it sorry is. Even her eyelashes are singing. <laughs> this sister gives me gangsta. Like she gonna <laughs> cut off his motherfucking fingers so he can't murder nobody. You better not take your motherfucking ass to sleep. Or maybe her. And Karma's gonna get you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and I'm a huge fan of Miss Karma. So mm. yeah, I'm, I'm also even loving the song. It's great. Here we go. Mm -hmm. It's almost done. So keep them close to you. Put your keys in your knuckles like I have to She has such a soft strength to her Silent but deadly Yes, yeah, but powerful I mean look at those eyes Look at that frozen frame Look at that it's the whole hat. I mean, it's giving me everything. What is that hat made of? <laughs> Carrie's mm. laughing at me. <laughs> it's what some is, sort of fur. Tell me what that hat is made of. That's all. I think it's some <laughs> kind of faux fur. What did you think, Bonnie? Was it faux fur or was it plumes? What it was it? Mm. I mean, I hate it all. I thought it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it's every bit given, of it. It's totally creative. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, bravo. Great suggestion. The video ate, as we put it in in, in, um, in our language. She ate it. So ate, yes. go out and tell your, your, your friends, girl, you ate that. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? that, that's the word for the week, everybody. Go into work next week and say, ooh, you ate that. What's mm. towel said, The hat is made out of towel. What? That is crazy. Sounds about right, though. <laughs> I feel like that's the way I do fashion. I just like <laughs> repurpose things. Yes. I'm all about repurpose. Yes, funny. Let's sit Terry cut. on the cut side. Oh, I know, right? I can't do the uncut side. <laughs> <laughs> Who does Carrie Clark. Okay, right? I'm all about the fabrication, Carrie. All right. Well, we are, that's all three of our songs for tonight. I know you're like, I want more. Yeah. So next week, what are we doing? 
Go ahead, Bonnie, give it to me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, it sounds like maybe we can do, what are you feeling? Do you want to do another chinchilla? Do you want to do more? What are you thinking? Tune in next week. Well, we actually, you know what? Let's challenge our viewers. Tune in next week and we'll let you choose which three videos we're going to do. And the <laughs> most videos who has the most votes will do. Because so far, you're saying we should do a chinchilla all day. For, is that what William wants us to do? Or Jeff wants us to do an all day chinchilla. Yeah. But I also have heard that we need to do some more Ren video, um, interview videos. So I don't mm -hmm. want to take away from either artist but um yeah. so let's let's leave it to them to whoever has the most votes for that what do you think about that bonnie the sure i'm the one who gets to you're make them. an executive decision um maybe i can make a poll <laughs> or something mm -hmm. uh, maybe i'll make a poll and see how that goes yeah um, see never used that poll. that pretty brain of yours i knew it was good for something yep. up there Carrie said, do a poll. And William says, you didn't disappoint. We all knew what was coming and seeing your reactions was right on point. Oh. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I think well, William's in our- I'm gonna try to get that seatbelt next week, y'all, because if Miss Thing got more to her than that, I'm definitely yeah. here for it. I They're do think though, free. if we do, if we do a chinchilla, I think it'd be, I think she does deserve like, for us just to do like an all chinchilla, like, not tagging her on the the end of a wren for at least yeah. our three. Come on, now, don't you, know. Be my sister. you know she got she just gonna cut your fingers off. You better listen. Mm, I know, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll um I'll get a poll going, and um if you guys you know vote, you know check it out, and we'll see what we're gonna do next Monday. We'll be back on our regular time and our regular schedule. Granted, my mm -hmm. mother gets better because she's t draining me right now. Um, uh, they'll take like one to two hours the Ren interviews. Okay, mm. well, you know Bonnie's resourceful. She might know how to cut them down. So, girl, um, she'll make it happen. But I <laughs> just want to chime in for a second. And yes, I'm giving you all the word, Bonnie. Mm. I want to know how to win one of your mugs. Come mm. on now, Carrie, you a day oneer. I'm gonna have to talk to to Bonnie off the screen and see a little something, something. See what we can do, huh? Little girl gone, MF diamond and elements. I'm Jeff on that. That's right. <laughs> You're awesome. with Jeff on that. <laughs> okay. And then Jeff says, I'm here for the long videos though. Have to kill time at work. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do that. Maybe we'll have to set like a another day yeah. and like do that or something, you know. I know, I know your our schedules are so Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we'll make it work for sure. Yeah. So I just want to say. Hello, is that Lionel Richie you talking about, Carrie? Carrie, Carrie wants a mug. <laughs> Hello, what about my mug? Carrie, which one? You want a cute one like me, girl? This one you want, girl? Or you we want the white one like Bonnie has? We have a couple other colors, too. Yeah. Go on the merch website, pick it out, and um, we, we can talk about pillow. Did you see her pillow? I'm Jill. It's so big, too. It makes me look dainty. <laughs> Well, all right, we we better... thank you all for coming as usual. Um, we love you until you can love yourselves. Um, um, we'll see you next week. Um, I'm going to try to give you my hearts if it works this time because see if it works. You know, it's finicky sometimes. So let's see if we can get it tonight. Uh, let's see how it goes. Nope, no hearts tonight.